we're going to do is from the main menu, we're going to choose algebra equations, and then we're going to uh, solve the equation. And, and instead of using x, or sorry, instead of using p, we're going to use x. So it's going to be, uh, oops, it's going to be uh, x plus 3 plus 8 equals 10. Just so you know, because we only have the x variable here just to the right of the alpha key. So the left-hand side of this is going to be x plus 3, close parentheses, um, plus 8. And the right-hand side of the equation is 10. And then, oh, we get x equals negative 1. So that's going to be that first choice there, uh, A. So we're going to keep scrolling down on the test. Um, and I want to use just the questions that are uh, suited to this program. Because you could do others on this, but sometimes it's not going to work so well. So look, positive solution to the given equation, what we're going to do is go to option 3, because it's quadratic. That's like an x squared. And again, instead of using k squared, it's going to be, oops, Oh my gosh, it's going to be uh, x squared minus 53 equals 91. So we're going to do is option two for the quadratic solved x squared. And then there's some uh, warning messages here because you don't want to have like x squareds on both sides. It might make it a little tricky. But if you do this, we, we're going to have like the x squared. And the squared key is right here, uh, upper left from the 7 key. And then minus 53. That's the left-hand side of the equation. The right-hand side of the equation is 91. And then the... Uh, the positive one is going to be 12. Let's see what the negative is. The one negative one is going to be negative 12. So uh, we're going to choose this 12 here, which is option D. And we're going to press enter twice to rerun the program. Um, let me keep scrolling through the test. So that was question three. Okay, the next one is seven. Now, what we're going to do, uh, it says the function F represents the total cost in dollars of attending an arcade when X games are played. How many games can be played for a total cost of 58? So basically we're saying like the y equals 58, f of x equals 58. So we're going to set 58 equals to 14 plus 4x. Because it says when x games are played. Um, and we're trying to solve for the games for the x value here. So again, you're going to go to uh, algebra equations and then we're going to solve the equation. And the left hand side will be 58. And then the right side will be 14 plus 4 and then the x key, the variable key, just to write the alpha key there. And then we get x equals 11. So basically, uh, that will be our answer there, the uh, student-produced response. And then what we're going to do... Okay, number 10. Um, the shop's uh, inventory starts with 4,500 paper cups. Manager estimates 70 of these paper cups are used each day. Based on this estimate, how many days will the supply of paper cups reach 1,700? So basically, we could say it's like an f of x. Like, hey, f of x equals 4,500 minus 70x. X is the number of days, and you're dropping 70 cups used each day. So when does this reach 1,700? So then my next step of this would be 1,700 equals 4,500 minus 70x. Just so you know what they're doing, because they're saying, oh, what day will it reach that? So x, again, is the number of days. So we're going to go to algebra equations, and then we're going to uh, solve an equation. And the left side will be 1,700. That's how many cups we have left. And then the right side will be the 4,500 minus 70x. And then we do that. x equals 40. Everybody's happy. Glad that worked out so well. Okay. 15, we have function h is determined by h of x equals 8 over 5x plus 6. What's the value of h of 2? So again, h of x is generally the same thing as saying like y equals. So we're going to set our equation to y equals 8. And then for the SAT, divided by open parentheses 5x plus 6. We definitely want to use parentheses here. Uh, I, I'll get into it in another video. But the basic thing is we're going to plug in a value here. So what is the y equation? It's 8 divided by, again, open parentheses. So we get the whole denominator in one expression. So that's 5x plus 6, close parentheses. And then, oh, what is the x equal? x equals 2. And then we get, oh, okay, cool. That's going to be 0 0.5. Now, look, um, the SATs always had uh, a preference for fractions, so I'd go 1 half. But like, let's say you didn't know how to convert that. Um, you can skip 30 seconds if you already know how to do this. Um, I'm going to do 0 0.5, math, enter, enter, and it'll change it to a fraction form. Okay, so good. We're going to go back to uh, programs and then SAT uh, 3. And then going to continue working through this test. So that was number 13. And then boom, boom, boom. Okay, sort of, I, I put a note here, um, maybe by hand is better. But let me let me show you this. Uh, it's 
for every increase in the value of x by 1, so when delta x equals 1, value of y, uh, the value of y increases by 8. So that means delta y equals plus 8. This delta symbol in math, and, and usually in science as well, and even econ, means change. So if you remember slope, okay, sorry for using cursive uh, for you youngsters out there, um, that's m, that's rate of change, that's basically delta y over delta x. So basically that's going to be 8 over 1. So the slope is 8. That's what's cool here. So we have the slope, and then when the value of x is 2, y is 18. So it's like, oh, okay, cool, it gives us even more information that we could use here. So if we say, uh, you know, like my x comma y, like a coordinate pair, is 2 comma 18. So I have, oops, sorry, I can't write straight lines. Uh, we have a slope and a point. So I'm going to go to linear equations and go to point slope. And then, oh, what is the m value? m value is 8. And then what is the x value? That's 2. Like my x1 and my y1 is 18. And then it gives us everything we could possibly want. Um, we have y equals 8x plus 2. I'm going to go with option C because that's a good match there. And that's awesome. That one's solved. Okay. And then we go on um, to the next one. And actually, 18 is the last one that you could use well with the calculator. Which of the following is the solution to give an equation? So we're going to do that. looks like a quadratic to me. And that is in standard form. Um, the cool thing about the standard form quadratic part of this uh, program is it'll give it to you in this funky rad format if there's a rad in the answer. So I'm going to solve in standard form. And again, if we have w squared, okay, again, I have to use x's because that's the default on the TI-84 calculator. I'm going to say a is 1. If we don't have something in front of the w squared, that's like a 1 w squared. The b, the coefficient of just the regular w, is 12 because we assume positive if we say numbers, right? And then, um, but this is going to be negative 40, that constant value, that c. So I'm going to put negative, that negative symbol to the left of the enter key, negative 40, and then enter. And then, oh, okay, cool, negative 6. So my answer that I get from the calculator is negative 6 plus or minus 2 rad 19. And so it's like, rank, rank. And, oh, it's a negative 6. Okay, cool. So this is one of those solutions because to get um, a little pedantic, it'd be negative 6 plus 2 rad 19 is one solution, and negative 6 minus 2 rad 19 is the other solution. That's uh, what this nomenclature means or this terminology. So we're going to choose option D, and we've finished the first part of test 6 from the College Board. See you next time for the second part of this test. May you do well in all your mathematical endeavors.